Hey guys, Ollie here from Local Knowledge. You know, it's February right now, got a little time on our hands, it's not offshore season, and I find myself this time of year thinking about what am I gonna do different or better? I wanna talk to you guys about something we've been doing for the last few years, and even earlier than that really, and our friends at AFCO have brought it to light. And what it is is a process called EKGME. I know a lot of you have probably heard about it now, you've seen us talk about it, you've heard AFCO talk about it, and a few other people on the web. But what EKG may is, in its shortest explanation, it's a way to quickly dispatch a fish and disconnect its nervous system from the rest of its body. Now, why would you want to do that? The reason for having that fish dead quickly, bled properly, and disconnected is it's going to yield a better product. And I don't mean like a little bit better. You will notice any fish that you eat at GMA, as long as you treat it properly, you will notice a jump in grade of quality that really makes it worth the time. Um, when people ask me, I say it's a difference between going and getting a supermarket steak and getting a prime steak at a steakhouse. It's just another level, especially with these big bluefin that we've been catching out here in California. They really deserve your respect. And if you can make that delicious fish even better, why not? It only takes a few seconds. So let me walk you through the tools that we use when we do this. AFCO fortunately has made these circuit breaker. It's called a Shinkai Jime is the name of the wire and it's used to perform Ike Jime, again a Japanese term. All this really is, it's a heavy gauge stainless steel wire, 14 gauge, it's got a little bit of a bevel on it and this is the big fish wire. So it's 14 gauge and 50 inches long and when we do some of those big tunas we'll use every inch of this cable feeding it in. So you start there, AFCO has those on their website, you can grab them at tackle stores now. Um, and then the other tool you need is a spike. Here's a basic one somebody gave us years ago. This thing's seen a lot of fish foreheads. Uh, it's been used a bunch, but you can see it's just a big piece of stainless rod, comes to a point. Where are you gonna spike the fish? For a fish like a tuna, I'll show you back here. There's typically a soft spot. Rear of their eyes and right in the center line of the fish on top here, I'm looking for that soft spot. I'm gonna bring it in and I'm gonna go a little bit of an angle back and you'll know when you hit it because the fish just starts to shake a little bit and goes limp. So tuna spike, super important. You could use a screwdriver if you have to. We've certainly done it in a pinch or you can get a fancy one. This is from my buddy, Greg over at GC Knives. This thing is badass. It's kind of an heirloom tool. You can see it's still got some fish tears on it from last season, but I got this as a gift. I bought one for my deckhand as a gift. It's just a rad tool to have around the boat and you can clip it right on your belt, kind of hanging backwards out of the way. You're always ready to process that fish. And then the only other thing you're gonna need is a fillet knife. Choose your favorite one. It doesn't have to be anything special. Now let's talk about the process. And I'm gonna talk about this, let's call it for our day in and day out fish here for the last couple of years. It's called 130, 140 pound tuna, right? We're gonna fight that fish with heavy drag. We wanna get that fish to the boat as fast as we can. The longer you fight a fish, the more lactic acid builds up in the fish. Lactic acid is from their, their fight reflex, their body excretes it, and it definitely takes the meat down a notch. Now this is where my deckhand, Diamond Dave, steps in. He is all about the EKG may process. He really geeks out on it and we've seen it elevate the quality of the fish that we have for ourselves and our families. So we're gonna bring that fish over the rail. It kills me guys when I see people just chucking a fish on the deck. Pay that fish the respect it deserves. You've just taken his life. Make sure you use him to the full extent. Gently bring that fish up over the rail. Set the head on the deck. Slowly walk it out. If you can even put some kind of a pad down, fortunately we have sea deck so it gives them some cushion but a rubber mat or anything, have somebody support the tail as it comes over. As soon as that fish gets on the boat, we're going to work. You can wait a little bit of time. There is a time window here, you know, 15 minutes to work with, but we're not doing that. We're off to the next bite. Let's get this guy handled, taken care of, and then on to the next one. Now I've got the fish laying out on the deck, or Dave does, I should say. He's gonna go ahead and he's gonna spike that fish and he's gonna spike it in the top of the head most of the times. You can actually do it from the side of the head as well, but it's a little trickier to find the right spot. Once he's got the brain spike in, you will immediately notice the fish kinda of does a shiver and then it sorta of stops. So that's how you know you've hit the spot. Leave the spike in the fish, there's no reason not to, and it just seems like it calms him down quicker. So once we got the spike in place, he's at next course of action is gonna to be to bleed the fish. Now in the case of a big tuna, like we're talking about here, 
we bleed them in a couple of spots. The number one spot that will release the most blood is you can just kind of see this line right here behind the fin. That's like a, a little lip that the fin tucks into when they're swimming fast. Their our main artery is gonna be right behind that. So I'm gonna go just below that, like a half inch. I'm gonna plunge a fillet knife in about that big. You will absolutely know when you hit the spot. It will start to have blood come out at a very, very fast rate. And it's gonna be, you know, that deep red blood that's fresh. The other place we're gonna cut the fish is right here at the base of the tail. Now you've basically severed, call it the femoral artery at both ends of the fish, and you've got blood coming out as fast as possible. On a bigger fish, the thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna keep spraying this hole right here with the washdown hose. And what that does is it prevents the blood from coagulating. It'll keep the blood flowing out of the fish in a fast manner without it drying and slowing down. We wanna try to get as much out of there as we can. Okay, so now we've got our fish. He's been spiked and he's been bled. Immediately thereafter, we're gonna start the ecogemia process. Now there's two ways to do it. We have found recently the easier way for the bigger bluefin is to come back to the tail on the fish here and we make an incision at the top of the tail. And what that'll do is it will expose the vertebrae of the fish. Once we've made that cut, we'll kind of continue our tail bleed cut, come up and we'll just kind of crack it about halfway through. On a big fish, you're gonna do a little bit of cutting. Once you have the tail sort of hanging down here, you can look at that vertebrae and you will see the canal that this goes in. You can see this image here, it's kind of blown up and it's not exactly accurate, but that would be the inside where the marrow is of the uh, vertebrae of the fish. This little canal above, which is smaller normally in scale, is gonna be where the spinal cord is and that's where we wanna go. So once you find that little hole, you're just gonna take your wire, you're gonna fish it down and you will feel, it's just like you put the thing into a straw. Like it knows, the wire knows where it wants to go. It might hang up a little bit, bring it back, change, wiggle your angle a little bit and keep feeding it and it'll go through there smooth as silk. Now what you'll see as you pass this into the fish, everywhere that this tip has contacted going forward or going from the head back, you will immediately notice the meat just goes limp. And it's like the equivalent of this, and then your hand just going soft. You can tell plain as day that you have now disconnected the brain from the actual body of the fish. You're gonna run this the full length. Once it's all the way in there, I give it a couple of quick back and forth, pull it right out, wrap it back up. This sucker is sharp too, so you're gonna wanna watch your eyes with this cable flipping around. And then I stash this somewhere safe in the boat where I'm not gonna lose it and it can't jab anybody. And now you have a fish that isn't riggered. It's actually very supple and soft and it will eat so much better. The meat is gonna be more tender. It's gonna have less blood in it. It's gonna have more flavor. For us, this has become a standard practice on every fish that comes over the rail. Once you get the process down, it really only takes a couple of minutes and the yield is makes it all worthwhile. I think if you try it yourself a few times, you're gonna agree. Thanks so much for checking us out. If you like this video, please give us a follow, give us a like and leave us a comment. Thanks so much for watching. We'll check you out next time.